good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen um, uh, thank you dr kalpan on behalf of uh, all members of the dubai pediatric club and members of the executive committee of dubai pediatric club i would like to welcome all viewers from dubai uae and all over the world especially gcc countries to this webinar this webinar is also then sponsored by uh, pfizer i would like to thank the management this uh, webinar is semi accredited in collaboration with nmc specialty hospital dubai i would like to thank dr vamsha shetty the head of cme team well today uh, we are going uh, to discuss about new way, new era of the conjugate vaccine we'll concentrate on meningococcal and pneumococcal uh, i'll be talking briefly on the history and about meningococcal vaccine after uh, my talk my colleague dr dinesh banu uh, will talk about conjugate pneumococcal uh, vaccine in a short while uh, we'll introduce him also our moderators today our dr bushra azam and dr kalpana sengupta well welcome uh, to dubai those who have not seen uh, this is a beautiful bojal arab this is the first time to come and see dubai well they are the members of dubai pediatric club in the first and fifth conference on behalf of all of them and members of the organizing committee once again i would like to welcome all of you well today talk is on uh, pneumococcal and meningococcal vaccine two deadly diseases that kill the children i'll be showing you some portraits these portraits speak by themselves and really if you look at them my uh, purpose of showing these portraits are there so that no child should be left unvaccinated and for the stimulation of the parents especially mother well our panelists our speaker is dr dinesh banu consultant pediatrician head of department of pediatrics with a special interest in the pediatric gastroenterology at the um, nmc royal hospital abu zabi we have our moderator dr bushra azam senior specialist pediatrician at prime hospital she is also a member of executive committee of the dubai pediatric club dr kalpana sengupta senior specialist pediatrician and head of department of pediatrics at nmc specialty hospital dubai she is secretary of the dubai pediatric club well now i was uh, going to the history of success of all a uh, great company this is today just a minute doctor uh, sohrab i yes. think we should introduce you before we go any further i know you require no introduction no introduction we'll continue later <laughs> so here you see the little uh, charles pfizer and uh, uh, charles erhart they actually establish uh, this uh, pfizer company how it is i just would like to say these big companies they have started with nothing you know pfizer and his uh, cousin charles erhart in 20 they went to united states they had nothing charles took 2500 from his father as a loan they opened a chemist shop in new york they started making a medicine anti parasitic drug called santonin charles was a chemist and erhart was a confectioner making sweet they made a anti parasitic they made an anti parasitic drug which was like toffee and people started those who didn't have parasite also they started taking this medicine and pfizer started from there became a big company now no i will not, i will uh, talk briefly about the history of the conjugate vaccines especially pneumococcal and meningococcal well this is a beautiful painting by Edvard Munch, the Norwegian painter, you see the mother and the sick child. See, look at this thing. Really, it talks to us. And very interestingly, on my right, there is a painting by the same painter, Munch. This is a screaming child. 
it is very interesting to know that this painting was sold in 2012 for $120 million. See, since 40 years, uh, uh, I'm in medicine, we are working, then I said doctors are getting a lot, 120 million. And interestingly, this painting was stolen twice, which was recovered on damage. Well, I always start in the memory of Hippocrates, the father of medicine who showed us the way. Edward Jenner, the father of vaccinology, always we have to remember them, they are pioneers. The beautiful painting showing Edward Jenner and Louis Pasteur today, we talk about Louis Pasteur because he isolated uh, the streptococcus pneumonia. But he said, in the field of uh, observation, ch chance favors only the prepared mind. This is what you, I mean, quotation, if mind is not prepared, even chance also will not help you. Then he said, let me tell you the secret that has led me to my goal. My strength lies solely in my tenacity, means persistence, hard work. And what I found, this is the basis of all, I mean, the uh, uh, people who had success, hard work and persistence. Well, whenever I get time, I show this painting by Norman Rockwell. Hundred times also if I show, this is a child and injection. Still look at the child, half naked, and still he is looking at the um, certificate of doctor, how many CME he has got. Nowadays, everybody wants to know how many CMEs. Well, about the history of isolation of the circle pneumonia, in 1881, the organism was first isolated simultaneously and independently by US Army physician George Stenberg and the French chemist Louis Pasteur. Look at the painting, look at the mother and father, sick child. Just one or two shots of vaccine will save life. I'm showing this just to stimulate that no child should be left unvaccinated. About the meningococcus, meningococcus, it comes from the Greek book, menings means membrane, cocos means berry. In 1885, Italian pathologists, Ettore Marchifawa and Angelo Selli, they describe intracellular micrococi in cerebrospinal fluid. In 1887, Anton Washington Baum identified the meningococcus in the cerebrospinal fluid and established a connection between the organism and the epidemic meningitis. Well, this Nicaea goes by the name of a German physician, Albert Neiser, who first uh, described the well, you remember 24th April is a meningitis day. On the center, it is written 24. This shows that this disease is so dangerous that kills the child in 24 hours. I will come to that. So remember 24th for April, 24th, the meningitis day and 24. On my left is a timeline, which I will explain. Well, a beautiful painting again, a mother and sick child. Look at the condition of the house, the other, I mean, daughter. Um, I want to show this thing really, they speak to us about the gravity of the situation, hopelessness of the mother. Well, this is the timeline. For pneumococcal, please remember three days. For meningococcal, conjugate vaccine, three days. We are, today we are discussing about the conjugate pneumococcal and meningococcal vaccine. For pneumococcal, three days are important. Year 2000, PCV7, year 2009, PCV10, and year 2010, PCV13, I'll come to that. For meningococcal conjugate, 2005, 2010, 2012, I will come to that. Well, one point I want, these are the data from CDC, FDA, this is a timeline of the vaccine. Even in CDC, FT, and other uh, uh, European Council um, countries, they mention the name of the vaccine in bracket with the name of the red name in, in order to avoid confusion. Because all are same, meningococcal conjugate vaccine, all are same, only carrier protein is different. So I will follow the same uh, 
when they are in bracket, I'll show the thread name in order not to have confusion. But if you see from 1974, this meningococcal vaccine group C, group A, then come, I, I, as I said, two days, uh, three days are here important. 2005, the first meningococcal uh, conjugate vaccine, second one was 2010, and third one, 2012. I will come to that. These are all timeline by CDC, FDA till today. No, this, this slide is very important. Just to remember this, I will come to that. There are three meningococcal conjugate vaccine, main diphtheria toxide, which is called menactra. This was licensed in 2005. Main um, CRM, that is cross-reacting material 197 called MenVO. It was licensed in 2010. And um, meningococcal titanus toxide, uh, that is nymandrase, this was licensed in 2012. I will come to this. This slide is very important in that I will mention about the dose, about everything. Look at the mother really as a sick child. What will happen to the child? Beautiful painting. Well, about the pneumococcal timeline, as you see, uh, Pasteur and Stenberg uh, identified uh, in 1881. As it came, year, you just see here, year 2000, 2009, 2010. These three days are important for us. As you see here, these are the timeline by CDC, FDA. As I mentioned, three days. PCV7 was introduced in year 2000, PCV10, 2009, PCV13, 2010. I'm not going too much in detail of that, no. Just for recapitulation, I will just mention about the meningococcal disease. This picture you see, this is a girl from New Zealand. She survived meningococcal disease, but unfortunately she lost both arms. Amputation was done because of the complication of this meningococcal disease. One in 10 dies and those who survive also, they have complications just because they miss one or two shots for vaccine, this happened. Look at this, this thing. In one thing in this painting, Look at the condition of mother and father. Fathers are more tolerant. Mothers, they can't tolerate when they see their children are sick. So we should not allow our children to become sick because of one vaccine. Well, about the uh, Nicerian meningitis is a causative agent of the invasive meningococcal disease. Just for recapitulation, invasive meningococcal disease is caused exclusively by human pathologian called uh, Nicerian meningitis. It's a gram negative. Diplococci bacterium. There are two, 12 zero groups of this Neisseria, six of which cause the majority of the invasive diseases. Most cases of the invasive diseases are caused by zero groups A, B, C, W135, Y, and X. And the typical clinical manifestation of invasive meningococcal disease can. Uh, include meningitis and septicemia. This is just for your recapitulation. And these are the statements by WHO. I would like uh, to request you to con uh, concentrate on the line written in red. Of course, I will come to that. And as WHO said, it's a bacterial infection, it's a life-threatening, um, contagious and life-threatening infection, a leading cause of bacterial meningitis and septicemia in many parts of the world. And the disease can occur in epidemic or, uh, or outbreaks. That, uh, please uh, focus on this line, a disease that occurs most frequently in infants, young children, adolescents, and adults. Please, I would like to uh, focus and uh, I mean, stress on this because the vaccination programs are all based on infants and adolescents. The, the disease that uh, can be difficult to diagnose and the last line, disease that can progress quickly and can be fatal within 24 hours. 10% of the patient die in spite of rapid treatment even. So just one or two just of the vaccine will save the life. So we should uh, advise all our patient mothers not to miss vaccination of the children. Well, these are the zero groups in uh, all over the world. Today, I would like to focus here in our region, Middle East, and I would like to give a good news that soon uh, meningococcal vaccination in fact also it will be implemented in Dubai. We'll have good news soon. Well, 
And this is also WHO map. As you see in black, these are the major, AWC is the major, and this is, and that is why coagulant meningocal vaccine is recommended. Well, I'm not going to detail of this study reference are there, but what I want to highlight that the peak incidence of invasive meningococcal disease occurs in infants and children zero to four years of age. With the second peak in the adolescent and young adult, as you see, these are incidence of uh, invasive meningococcal disease in the Canada and in the Europe, as you see both of them in children and a peak in the adolescent. And uh, again, I would like to highlight the basis of vaccination is also on that uh, infants, especially le less than one year and in the adolescent group. Well, a beautiful painting, a grandmother praying for the child, very sick child, what will happen? Really, this beautiful painting. Well, as I mentioned, infants less than one year of age are higher risk for invasive meningocal disease. This is because they have a name, a Navy immune system uh, in, in which the protective antibodies have not yet developed and waning of the protective maternal antibody levels. And most cases of meningocal disease occur in otherwise healthy individual without any identifiable factor. I'm not going, I just want to highlight the importance of this and why vaccination in this age group. You know this, just to recapitulate, that this disease has a rapid onset uh, and course. And you see in this one, it is, this is a start that just like a cold, a fever, irritability, just like any flu, and in a matter of hours, it kills the child. They have, uh, in this study, they have found the mean uh, time for hospital admission, 13 hours following this, thing. rapidly in 24 hours, it kills. Just to highlight this, well, in any branch of medicine, a thorough examination is a must. Well, these are uh, the statement by the CDC, CDC, they say that people at the increased risk, who are those? Again, please, uh, I would like to draw your attention again. What CDC say? Infant, younger than one year, adolescent and young adults, 16 to 23 years old. People in certain medical condition that affect the immune system, I'll come to that, microbiologists, and people are at the risk of outbreaks. Beautiful painting. If I get time, 100 times I'll show this also. Look at the mother. Father can tolerate, mother cannot. A doctor and a child might look for this. Well, this is classification of the meningococcal uh, vaccine. But as, as I said, I want to concentrate here on conjugate meningococcal vaccine, which is given here. Uh, there are so many type of vaccine, B, C. I'm concentrating on Conjugate quadrivalent meningococcal vaccine, we'll discuss this. Well, I, there was one study from Alain uh, from 2005 to, uh, 2000 to 2005. They found there are 92 cases, 35% were due to, because of Neisseria meningitis and 16% streptococcal pneumonia. But then uh, I would like to draw your attention in the red line that the peak occurrence of meningitis was in young children less than one year. Of course, the type of this uh, was not determined. And there are a lot of uh, reports from Saudi, especially during Hajj time. Reference that I'm not going to detail of that. What uh, we are talking about to conjugate, just I would like to say, what is the conjugate? Conjugate is a type of vaccine that join a protein to an antigen in order to improve the protection the vaccine provides. Now I'll mention about that. Now, I was telling you about this thing. This is the, one of the most important slides, which I've got. There are three conjugate quadrivalent meningocal vaccine. As I said, the carrying protein is different in that. The one which diphtheria toxide is called Menactra, it was licensed in the US in 2005 and received a FDA approval for children as long as nine, nine months in April 2001. Second one is um, uh, meningococcal conjugate vaccine with uh, cross-reacting material 197 called MinBio. It was licensed in 2010 
Angesin Befti Apuval in children as young as two months. The third one is meningocal conjugate vaccine titanus oxide nimerix. It was licensed in 2012 and received uh, European Union approval for use in children as long, young as six weeks in December 2016. So the earliest age which you can give vaccine is six weeks in nimerix, followed by two months, menvia, and nine months. Now, about the um, uh, Melancthia, it is start the primary vaccination at nine months, two doses, three months apart. After two years, uh, one dose is given. For Menvio, it is start three plus one, two months, four months, six months, booster at one year, uh, one to two years, one plus one, after two years, one dose. For nine Mendrix, it is start two plus one, means six weeks before six months, another one, and booster at one year. Between six months to one year, one plus one, one after six months and one at one year, and after one, uh, one year, one dose only. For other two, after two years, but for Nemeris, it is after uh, one year. This, this, this is the most important thing about, and uh, about this thing, um, the European um, uh, Union, it, it was approved in 2012, um, uh, conjugate meningovaxia titanus toxide uh, protein, and it is licensed in more than 65 countries, including UAE. And in, uh, on December 19, 2016, uh, it was uh, approved for use in children as young as six weeks. Well, look at this beautiful painting, a winter, a mother, hopeless mother, misery, agony, she doesn't know what to do. Look at the condition of the house, over and it was beautiful painting. Well, this is nutshell um, that shows that the, from six weeks to six months, the vaccine, uh, Nymangis Menvio, you can't give other vaccine. Of course, this A is in Australia, they give uh, two plus one, but the dose is, for Menvio is three plus one, from two months for nine weeks, from six weeks, two plus one. Again, from uh, six to eight weeks, as I mentioned, from nine months, all three comes. Just to remember about the dosage of that. Now, this is from CDC, the high risk group. Who are those high risk? Those people with HIV, those who are having asplenia and sickle cell disease, and those who are having persistent complement, uh, component deficiency, those who are using drugs for that, that is Eclusimab, Rabu, Lizumab. Microbiologists, as I said, those who are traveling to the endemic areas, uh, college uh, freshmen and military recruits. Well, uh, just to mention that uh, there are two meningocal B vaccine, uh, Bex0 and Tromemba. They are used in uh, countries, according to the in America, it is uh, recommended after 10 years and in 16 to 23 years, I'm not going to that, just to know that these are the vaccine available. Well, about the meningocal vaccine, about age, as I said, six weeks, two months, nine months. And on the adolescent vaccination, routine vaccination, two doses are given at 11 to 12 years, and the second dose at 16 years, two doses. Catch up vaccination 13 to 15 years, one dose is given, another one at 16 to 18 years. Those who are 16 to 18 years only, they receive one dose. Here, now in the Dubai, they give 13 to 15 years, but it's a good news that soon uh, meningococcal vaccination in infancy will be implemented. Well, now regarding this travel, one point I would like to say the patient. A cause that we want to go to Hajj, we want to come for vaccination. I said, when you want to go, it's after five days. Please remember, tell your patients, the meningococcal vaccine for going for Hajj or travel should be given at least two weeks. Minimum 10 days, but they recommend preferably two weeks before travel it should be given. If it is given before, it is not valid. It, it has to be, I mean, they won't allow the passengers to go. So two weeks at least before. Well, these are the, those who are traveling, as I said, about the dosage, only after 
uh, one year for dynamic is after one year, one dose for uh, menactive amenorrhea after two years. The difference is when you come to the people with the special, uh, in a special situation like anatomy uh, or functional anemia, uh, uh, HIV and other things, here, after CDC and FDA recommends after two years, uh, two dose should be given, two dose eight weeks apart. And here for uh, conjugate meningococcal vaccine, the diphtheria toxide, please concentrate on the last power in the red for anatomic or functional ASP anemia and this sickle cell disease, HIV, for, for nine to 23 months, it should not be given, the diphtheria toxide. Uh, why? Because the CDC say it must be at, administered at least four weeks after completion of the PCV, 13. I will come to that. And uh, this meningococcal diphtheria toxide uh, conjugate should be administered either before or at the same time as the TAP. Why? I will come to that. But this is the latest uh, CDC recommendation say because of the high risk of invasive pneumococcal disease. Children with functional or anatomic aspinemia or HIV infection should not be vaccinated with conjugate meningococcal diphtheria toxide before the age of two years to avoid interference with the immune response to 13 valent pneumococcal conjugate. Of course, they recommend other uh, type of meningococcal vaccine can be given. Well, in the uh, man conjugate meningococcal diphtheria toxide conjugate, Say if it, this is used in person of any age with this condition, it should be administered until at least four weeks after that. Regarding DTA, uh, the, uh, uh, giving this uh, diphtheria toxide uh, with DTAP, say this vaccine should be administered either before or at the same time as DTAP to avoid interference of DTAP with the immune response to meningococcal vaccine among children at greater risk of meningococcal disease. I'm not going to detail of that. I'll give you a reference. Well, this is CDC. This is just released on 25th September last month, 2020, mortality, uh, morbidity weekly report CDC. This is a beautiful report, 40 pages. It answers all the questions regarding the meningococcal vaccine. I recommend those ones I can share with them later on this one. Well, this is another important slide. I'm going to finish my talk in nutshell about all these three types of vaccine, if you want to know. Well, the, regarding the um, age of, uh, as far age indication is concerned, upper limits uh, of uh, uh, vaccination is scheduled, persistence, co-administration with other vaccine, the boosting effect, protein carrier, so uh, about the age, as I said, six weeks, two months, nine months, upper limit of age uh, in some countries are different. Uh, it's like uh, in Canada and United States, they are mentioning 55 to 65 for uh, after 55 years. About the schedule, I, 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 I told you that I may get two plus one, after that one plus one, after one year one. The main view, three plus one, after, six months, one plus one after two years, one. And here about the Menecta, nine to 23 months, one plus one after two, two years, one. Now about the persistent, uh, antibodies persist for five years. This is according to European Union. And of course, I will show you just uh, on 29th of June, uh, the article published that they have found that the uh, antibodies for is persist for 10 years. Of course, internationally also, this I'll show for uh, main view in European Union is five years and in America, 21 months and for Menachia is five years. About with co uh, administration with other vaccine, if you want in detail, I can share with you. Well, I've taken a, a snapshot of this uh, two or article, this was uh, above 2019 and this is 2020. This was published in Human Vaccine and Immunotherapeutics that 10 years antibody persistence are there for uh, conjugate meningococcal vaccine, titanus toxide, uh, 
conjugate. Uh, if you want, I can share with you later a beautiful vaccination scene. Look at the people, all anxious. But one thing is that look at the small child, how innocent playing with the animals. Beautiful painting. Well, I'm going to end by showing you a few paintings just to highlight the importance of vaccination. Not look at the child, look at the mother, all you know, in agony, the hopelessness, misery. What to do? Child is sick, going to die. Just please advise mothers to give vaccine. Look at this, how the child is sick and mother sitting there. Look at this one. Even animal, you know, there are tears in the eye of the animal for the illness of this child. They speak to us these portraits. Now, on the other hand, few mothers are there like this in the era of the um, uh, mobile computer, Facebook, Instagram. This mother doesn't know what type of feeding child is having and whether the child needs any vaccine or not. And the father also takes the child to the school, you know, in which condition. We have to advise the mother not only on feeding, also for vaccination. Well, I end by a quotation uh, from Hippocrates, the father of medicine, life is short and the art long, the occasion instant, experiment perilous, decision difficult. What a quotation. Well, uh, after this, I, will, uh, I would like to request Dr. Bushra, my colleague, to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Dinesh. Well, once again, I invite you to Dubai, the beautiful city and the best time to visit Dubai, one of the most beautiful cities, Sheikh Zayed Road. Thank you very much. Uh, over to Dr. Uh, Bushra. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Zohra, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, so it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Danish Banur for uh, the talk uh, about uh, pneumococcal vaccine for today. Uh, Dr. Danish is a consultant, pediatrician, and head of pediatric department from an MC Royal Hospital in City Khalifa City in Abu Dhabi. He has extensive experience in pediatric and pediatric gastroenterology. Uh, he has DCH, uh, RCPCH, RCPCH, and very long experience in different uh, hospitals in the UK. Also, he has experience in pediatric gastroenterology and pediatric nutrition from Boston University in USA. Uh, Dr. Danish has written a chapter in the American textbook of clinical uh, pediatric. Also, his uh, papers have been accepted in many international journals, and he has been invited as a speaker, and his posters were accepted in uh, many prestigious international pediatric and pediatric gastroenterology meetings. Uh, this is, of course, part of his long CV, so uh, thank you very much, Dr. Dinesh, for accepting our invitation, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much.